Queen of heaven, rejoice. For he whom you did merit to bear has risen as he said. Pray for us to God. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary. For the Lord has truly risen. Let us pray. O God, who gave joy to the world through the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, grant, we beseech you, that through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, his mother, we may obtain the joys of everlasting life through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. A warm and loving welcome is extended to all worshiping with us at our Eucharistic celebration. A special welcome is extended to all of our visitors. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. The reading for today's Mass begins on page 266 of the Missalette. Our gathering hymn is number four, All Creatures of Our God and King, found in the celebration hymn. Hymn number four.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather on this day, and as we continue to celebrate our Lord's resurrection, we call to mind our sins as we pause in this moment, asking the Lord to favor us once again with pardon and strength as we prepare ourselves now to celebrate the most sacred of mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Lord, we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and to bring us to everlasting life. people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, 
the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you act out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Answer me, O oh my just God, you who relieve me when I am in distress. Have pity on me and hear my prayer. Lord, let your face. wonders for his faithful ones. The Lord will hear me when I call upon him. Lord, let your face shine on Countenance shine upon us. You who put gladness into my heart. Lord, let your face shine on us. As soon as I lie down, I fall peacefully asleep. For you alone, O oh Lord, bring security to my dwelling. Lord, let your A reading from the first letter of St. John. 
My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation of our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. scriptures to us. Make our hearts burn while you speak to us. Alleluia. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of big fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. And he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And as he said, and he said to them, This is written that the Christ would, thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. A 
A very hearty good morning to you, my family in Christ. And once again, warm and loving welcome to all who visit with us on this day. And as we come on this day, and as we hear the last line of the gospel, which says to us, you are witnesses to these things. These are very, very important words for us because we, in this day and age, we proclaim that he is risen. And as we come on this third Sunday of Easter, things have slowed down a bit. Slowed down and in a way the excitement has also uh, kind of faded off. On Easter Sunday, there was the empty tomb and the people were running around excitingly. On the second Sunday, Mercy Sunday, the risen Lord appeared again to Thomas and asked him to touch his wounds. On this day, the third Sunday of Easter, the risen Lord Jesus was still and is still appearing to his disciples, but things were not as dramatic as compared to the previous two Sundays. And so once again, my farm in Christ, the common theme of today's readings is the challenge, the challenge to adjust our lives, to adjust our lives to the living presence of the risen Lord as we grow daily more aware of the presence of the Holy Spirit within us and surrounding us. And my farm in Christ, this awareness should strengthen our hope in his promises, bring us true repentance for our sins and renewal of our lives and lead us to bear witness to Christ by our works of charity, by the very way we live our lives. The readings also remind us that the purpose of suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus was to save us and save us from our sins. And so let us look at the first reading. The first reading taken from the Acts of the Apostle gives us Peter's second sermon, addressing the Jewish assembly at Solomon's portico in Jerusalem. And there Peter forcefully shows how the messianic prophecies have been fulfilled in the crucified and risen Jesus and challenges his hearers to repent and turn toward God for and so that their sins may be wiped away. And in our second reading, John answers doubts raised by the heretics of his time, asserting the fundamental Christian doctrine that Jesus' death was a sacrifice offered as expiation of our sins. And then we have the gospel, which describes Jesus' appearance on the evening of his resurrection to his apostles who were in the locked upper room, the cynical, as it is called. And here we see by farm in Christ, Jesus removed the doubts of his apostles about his resurrection by inviting them to touch him and by eating a piece of cooked fish. And so Jesus explains how the prophecies have been fulfilled in him. And then he commissions them to bear witness to him and preach. To be exact, he said, repeat, preach repentance and forgiveness of sins in his name after receiving the Holy Spirit. And so my farm in Christ, our scripture for this third Sunday of Easter is all about believers. But it is also about doubting. It's also about wondering. It's also about trying to figure out things. And so again, the common theme is the challenge for us to adjust our lives in the living presence of the risen Lord, well aware, well aware of his presence within us and around us. And so this awareness, it should strengthen our hope in his promises. And this should bring us to the true repentance of our sins and the removal of our lives, renewal of our lives. And this renewal of lives 
should lead us to bear witness to Christ, as the last line of the gospel says. Again, the readings also remind us that the purpose of the suffering and death of Jesus was to save us from sins. These are the words of Jesus to his apostles. You see how it is written that the Christ would suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that in his name repentance for the forgiveness of sin would be preached to all the nations. And this, my farm in Christ, is the risen Christ speaking to us from the gospel. And his words are echoed by Peter in the first reading, where he says, now you must repent and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. So what is all this about sin and repentance in this time of resurrection? Even in the second reading, John urges his readers to stop sinning. And if they have sinned, they should seek forgiveness in Christ, who by his sacrifice has taken our sins away. Most people who are living in sin silence their consciences. And they say they don't have a conscience. But every one of us, we have a conscience. We just don't listen to it. As I said, we silence our conscience. And we don't want our conscience to trouble us with the promise of repenting some future day. But my farming cries, it is possible that a change of heart can be brought about in a single day. Can we possibly alter our tastes? Can we possibly alter our will? Can we possibly alter our character and habits without any difficulty in a brief period of time? We might be inclined to sit back and say, why all the fuss if everybody is a sinner and forgiveness is easily got? But it is true, all of us are sinners. All of us fall short of God's glory. But we have a responsibility to acknowledge our sins and to ask for forgiveness. John issues a solemn warning in our second reading for us this morning. He says, we can be sure that we know God only by keeping his commandments. To know is one of these terms which had a special meaning in sacred scripture. It had almost nothing to do with intellectual understanding. To know God meant to abide in God. To know God meant to have a close and personal relationship with God. And this, my farm in Christ, is only possible if we live in imitation of Christ, if we put Christ, if we put on Christ, as St. Paul says, for us as Christians, Christianity gives us a great privilege, or privileges, I should say. Let me pluralize it. But it also makes great demands on us. And the demand is that we cannot be like Christ unless we are pure in heart. And that is a journey. There is a story of a poor and simple man who regularly visited a certain church and would always pray on his knees before a large crucifix. He was once asked why his lips never moved while in this attitude of prayer before the image of Christ crucified. And this man's reply was, I look at him and he looks at me. And so for this man, words had given way to contemplation. And truly those who look long enough at Christ, whether before a representation of Christ or just mentally, will finally become like Christ and that of all eternity because of the vision of him as he really is. What am I saying here, my farm in Christ? If we look back over our lives, as young as we are or as old as we are, most of us will find something or other that we very much regret. And we might remember speaking or acting in ways that hurt or damaged others. We might be aware of not doing something that we could have done and that in our heart of hearts, wanted to do. 
And sometimes these experiences of personal failure can leave us burdened. We can find it hard to move on from them. Why? Because they trouble us and we struggle to be free of them. And they can weigh heavily on us and drain us of our energy. We can find ourselves going back in memory to them over and over and over and over and over again. The first disciples of Jesus must have felt like this in the aftermath of Jesus' crucifixion. And during the days of Jesus' final journey, they had all deserted him. Their mood in the aftermath of Good Friday can only have been one of deep regret. They must have felt that their relationship with Jesus was over, done, finished. According to today's gospel, however, the first words the risen Jesus spoke to his disciples were, peace be with you. Peace be with you. These words assured the disciples of the Lord's forgiveness. For those first disciples, the initial experience of the risen Lord took the form of a profound experience of forgiveness. This was the risen Lord's gift to them, as it is to us, forgiveness and peace. The gift of forgiveness can be difficult to receive at times because we still hurt inside. We still hold grudges. We still say, I am forgiven you. The saying to forgive and forget is what it is. Just that a saying. But to forgive is very important. You never forget. But the more important thing is to forgive. We wonder if we are really forgiven when Jesus said, peace be with you, they responded with alarm and fright and thought that they might be seeing a ghost. And so the risen Jesus then questioned them. Why are you agitated, he said. Why are those doubts rising in your hearts? It took the disciples a little while to realize that they were forgiven. Before we can receive the Easter gift of God's forgiveness that comes to us through the risen Lord, there's something we must do. We must first acknowledge our need of that gift. In other words, my family Christ, we need to admit the truth. And we run away from the truth. The truth is that we are always in need of the gift of God's forgiveness and recognizing our need and asking God for the gift of forgiveness is what we call repentance. And so the sacrament of reconciliation, which is a privileged opportunity to admit the truth, we run away from. That is the sacrament, one of the sacraments of the church where we don't check for, we aren't that sacrament run at all. And we prove it every time we have a reconciliation service in this parish, every time. And I used to say, of all the three parishes I've been to, I say, we have a bunch of saints, we have no sinners, everything good. I could close up shop and say, Bishop, and you could move me on to somewhere else. These people are saints, I don't need to come here. But that's not the truth. To acknowledge our need of God's forgiveness and to ask directly for it. And that is what we do in that sacrament. In that sacrament, the risen Lord says to us, peace be with you. And the words of absolution include the prayer, through the ministry of the church, may God grant you pardon, peace, and healing. Who was it who said, to err is human, to forgive is divine? If that is true, my farm in Christ, we need divine help to do what is divine. And the greatest example we can offer is forgiveness. As the Father forgave us through Jesus' death on the cross, so we forgive others through our example. There are many, many ways to forgive. But our example has to be a Christian example. There are different ways to forgive. 
the Christian offers forgiveness first, not seeking an apology from others. We should offer forgiveness from here, not from here, from our hearts and through our words and through our actions, more importantly, before someone who has wronged us even asks for it. I always say we have to be the prince or the princess in situations. Be the bigger person. And sometimes that is hard because of our humanness. But it is not impossible. And so this message, my farm in Christ, of Christ granting us his peace through our repentance, this is the message that alone can bring peace to the world and that realize Jesus' words. Peace be with you. May that peace be with us as we leave the sacred space and go out to witness as he calls us to. Having heard and reflected on God's word, we make now our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Christ is risen, and the power of his resurrection fills the world with new life. With hope we bring him all our needs as we pray. Our response is, Risen Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Risen Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. For the church, that the Spirit will open our minds to understand the scriptures and empower us to share the message of God's love and forgiveness with all whom we encounter. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. For all who lead the church, that they may be encouraged to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. For the grace of forgiveness, that we will be open to God's free and generous forgiveness and strive to forgive others as we have been forgiven, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. For the gift of faith, that we will depend more fully on God in every aspect of our lives and grow in our confidence 
that he will never abandon nor forsake us. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. For all who receive the Easter sacraments, that they may always rejoice in Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. For all who are broken and wounded, that they may find healing in Christ, and that God will help us recognize them as our brothers and sisters through the wounded Christ. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. For a spirit of stewardship, that we may make wise use of the resources of the earth and protect the soil, air, and water for future generations. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. For the sick, that they may be comforted by Jesus, who is always present with them. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. For all who have died, we remember Stephanie Ramming on the 20th anniversary of her death, that they may touch Christ and be one with him for all eternity. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. For our personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. God our Father, truly your voice speaks of peace, peace for us, your people and for all who turn to you in their hearts. May our prayers at this Eucharist strengthen us to be more worthy and grateful bearers of your peace to others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the preparation of the altar and gifts, we sing hymn number 135, In Bread We Bring You, Lord. Hymn number 135.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exalted church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to Lord, you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed, he never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain, who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are clay. on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and granted by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your altar, Lord, confirm us in unity so that together with Francis, our Pope, Patrick, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people. As we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, Saint Anselm, our patron, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. we may be always free from sin and to save from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our fellow Christians to the celebration of the Eucharist, always as our brothers and sisters in Christ. Catholics believe that the Eucharist is the true body and blood of Christ, and that our sharing in the Eucharist is a sign of our oneness and unity in the Catholic Church. We invite now Catholics who are prepared and properly disposed to receive Holy Communion today to come forward. To our other brothers and sisters present, we invite you to continue to pray and sing along with us during this time.
Our communion hymn is number 205, My God Loves Me, found in the celebration hymnal, hymn number 205. second communion hymn is hymn number 169, Let Us Break Bread Together. Hymn number 169.
soul of Christ, sanctify me, body of Christ, save me, blood of Christ, liberate me, water from the side of Christ, wash me, passion of Christ, strengthen me, O good Jesus, hear me, within thy wounds hide me, suffer me not to be separated from me, from the malicious enemy defend me. In the hour of my death, call on me, and bid me come unto thee, that with thy saints I may praise thee forever and ever. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for just a few moments. Once again, we lovingly and warmly welcome all those who are visiting with us. As a parish community, we extend a heartfelt welcome to the family of Stephanie Ramming, Ramming worshiping with us at, the, at this Mass this morning on her 20th anniversary of her death. So, Ramming family, you are truly welcome. The annual plenary meeting of the Antilles Episcopal Conference for 2024, um, that is our um, region of bishops, they will be meeting here this coming week, and the opening mass will be held this afternoon at 6 p.m. at St. Francis Xavier Cathedral, and all of us, the faithful, are invited to attend. As the Catholic Archdiocesan annual appeal continues, Again, no amount is too big or too small. And please remember that the members of the team and Deacon and myself, we will be approaching you as to give a case as to why you should make an appeal if you have not already done so um, towards the Catholic Astro-Oxygen Appeal. The Get on the Bus experience will be hosted by our parish in Anselm on Friday the 26th of April from 7.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. And again, this is an opportunity for all of the young people in our parish to attend this event. It is an event where all of our young people gather from the various parishes in the Archdiocese on the island of New Providence. It is always a wonderful experience to, um, for our young people to experience it, so I implore our parents and guardians to please allow um, their young people to attend that experience on the 26th of April um, from 7.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. And it is a Friday, so you can get rid of your young people in, in a sense. They'll be safe. Um, the Ladies Auxiliary of our parish, they're hosting a prayer breakfast Saturday coming, the 20th of April, from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Tickets are $25 per person. Now, for our feast day, our parish feast day is April the 21st, and that falls on a Sunday. So next week, Sunday, we will celebrate our patron, our feast day, and Mass will be at 8.30 a.m. There will only be one Mass, and following that Mass, there will be fun activities in the parish all day. So after Mass, um, we have the financial report to the parish, and then after that, um, the grounds will be um, for us to just enjoy each other's company. And why we're having one Mass is to bring together everybody into that one Mass so we can celebrate one, um, our patron. Um, the 21st Nassau Guide Unit will host also a tea party on Sunday the 28th of April at 4 p.m. in the Parish Hall. Tickets are $25. And please come out and support these young people. Um, the 21st Nassau Guard Unit is very active in this parish and they do a lot of work. So please support our young ladies in this regard. At this time, I invite those who are celebrating birthdays to come forward for a blessing.
Let us pray. God of all creation, we offer you grateful praise for the gift of life. Hear the prayers of this, your daughter, who recalls the day of her birth, and rejoice in your gifts of life and love of family and friends. Continue to bless her life with your presence. Continue to surround her with your love, that she may enjoy many happy years, all of them pleasing to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless and keep you. Amen. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. May he continually look upon you with kindness and give you his peace. Amen. Happy birthday. To the choir and organists, thank you for leading us in liturgy and thank you for the meditation. Very, very nicely done. Thank you. And for you, the parishioners of St. Ansem, um, we as a pastoral th team would like to thank you for your prayers during this past week as we were on clergy retreat. We had a very fruitful and successful clergy retreat, and I, we thank you for your continued prayers for us. Um, continue praying for us um, as we continue to try our best to serve you um, in this archdiocese. I also hope that you have a very fulfilled day and a week ahead filled with lots of love, joy, and happiness. Please stand now as we pray our prayer for the family. God of our families, we praise and adore you, our Creator. Thank you for, for creating, creating us in your image, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the, the divine, divine family. We thank you for the grace of belonging to you and each other. We are grateful for the many blessings that have come to us as family. Forgive us for the sins we have committed against each other neglect, abuse, abandonment, impatience. Help us to forgive those members of our family, including ourselves, who have caused us pain and suffering. Lord, heal the deep scars within us. We have all been deeply wounded by our history. Recreate our families, O oh Father, in our Bahamian family of islands. Show us how to accept and appreciate ourselves and each other. Recreate us, Lord, again like you, that we may recommit ourselves to build a better world of families according to the wisdom of your kingdom. This prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to We conclude our Eucharistic celebration with the singing of hymn number 548, Lord, this Pasc Paschal time reminds us. Hymn number 548.
good and